Okay, folks, so here we are. We are in, uh, if you're listening to this video, you're probably in, uh, what is it, grade 11, uh, applied math, okay? <laughs> Hopefully I'm not so slow with everything else we talk about today, but if you're watching this video, you should be in grade 9 applied math anyway Or math college math. I guess that's that's probably the better word for it college math now I've done a bunch of videos for the grade 9 applied math, and I made those videos usually like four or five minutes long um, I'm not going to do that with you guys because you guys should be able to listen to a video a little bit longer because you're that much more mature now but also uh, if you get tired of hearing me talk just push pause and then come back and listen to me a little later okay so welcome to this course we're gonna start off today talking about parabolas and uh, I guess the title uh, from your textbook has to do with uh, something called quadratic relations but as you'll see quadratics have a lot to do with parabolas and uh, first of all, I just want to talk about a parabola. Um, here we have a graph. You know, here's the y-axis. You might remember that. Here's the x-axis. And I want to show you a drawing of a parabola. There's a parabola. Okay, it goes on forever upwards. Looks like kind of like a U. Parabolas don't have to go in that direction. They can go like this. Okay. And if you want to, a parabola could even uh, a parabola could even go like this could be huge okay there's many different sizes uh, in fact there's as many different parabolas as there are human beings in fact there's way more parabolas because there's way more numbers than human beings so anyway there's an infinite number of parabolas uh, I think there's this math teacher well I know there's a math teachers that said if this is a bola then this is a parabola ha 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 bad math joke a par pair of Bolas, anyway, parabola, terrible, eh? Anyway, see how the smiley face is going on here? Just remember, that's kind of a happy parabola. It's positive. And if you get a, you know, a sad face, that's kind of a, uh, a negative or a sad parabola. But we'll talk about that all later, okay? So why do we learn about parabolas? Well, believe it or not, in real life, and yes, in this course, we will occasionally talk about things that have to do with real life. You could have a situation like this. Your friendly neighborhood uh, dolphin, or people that are my age might know a dolphin named Flipper, who would jump out of the water. And parabolas are suddenly really important when you look at a picture like this, because gravity takes effect. As soon as we decide to defy gravity and take off, it just says, wait a minute, you got to come back down. And look at that. See the dotted line? I see a parabola there. Okay. Or if you don't like dolphins as much and you're into, uh, you know, X Games type sports, you might look at a motocross bike like this and say, hey, here we have a parabola. And uh, this is something that I always liked as a young person. Look at that. Makes a nice parabola. Goes back down. There is actually a mathematical equation that could draw a parabola just like this. And, you know, when people make video games and things like that, in order to make them realistic, they have to know a lot about math in order to create equations that make things realistic. And so there's a lot of math going on in the background that you don't realize, especially like video games. They're huge. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to look at that picture a little longer. It's very cool. He's doing a front or a back flip, folks. That's right. He's doing a front. Wait a minute. Is it a front or back? It looks like he's... Okay, it's a back flip. I was thinking front flip. Is that a single or a double? Whoa, double backflip. Okay, I am off topic already. This is a video. It's going to be on YouTube. i got to get going here. Uh, I've never been to Wonderland, but this thing here, it might not be Wonderland. It's probably someplace in the States. I just got the picture off the internet, but that looks like a lot like a parabola to me. By the way, is it a positive or a negative parabola? It has a top or it has a as you're going to learn, this is called the maximum, which makes a lot of sense. Sometimes in math, words don't make sense. Well, this makes sense. This parabola here has a maximum. Or you can, if you don't like writing long words, you can just write max. And a parabola that is negative, okay, remember it's like a sad face? It has a maximum. There are other parabolas that look like this, 
and just to humor me, can you tell me a guess? Can you guess? What would this be called, this very bottom portion? If this is the maximum, then this has got to be, for this positive, happy parabola, it's got to be a, thank you, a minimum. Good job. I'm just going to write min because I'm being lazy. Okay, and we've got more to talk about. Remember, you can push pause any time if you're getting sick of hearing me. Good. All right. So, wow. I made this chart way too big here. So let's uh, shrink this thing down here. Come on, you can do it. Let's highlight everything. Control A. Oh my goodness, what happened? You're going to have to bear with me here. Control A and then Control G. Let's see if that helps. And I'm going to bring all of that up here. Wow, it's still kind of big, isn't it? What a waste of time. Man, you're probably wanting to push pause already. There we go. Okay, so it's not just video games who use parabolas. You might be the creator. You might be a baker, and you might be making mini pies. Okay? Personally, I like, uh, I like all pie, personally. Apple, strawberry, rhubarb, mix them up. Just not rhubarb. Not, <laughs> not rhubarb. That's a new thing, rhubarb. No, rhubarb and pumpkin. No thanks. But most other pie, awesome. Okay? So here we have a graph. Uh, the number of pies sold. And this is some company that made a chart of this. And these are mini pies, so they're pretty cheap. This is one dollar for the pie. They decided to sell them for a dollar, and this is how many pies were sold. And if you remember how to read a graph, you look across and you say, that's about, I don't know, maybe 30 pies. Okay, so for a dollar, 30 pies were sold. For two dollars, ooh, it got even higher. It was more like 40 pies. And then they decided to sell the pies for three dollars and they only sold again thirty pies so if you were a business owner and you wanted to figure out what's the best price for pie you want to pick remember is that the maximum or the minimum you want to pick the maximum height of this graph and you want to say uh, two dollars is the best price okay so Forty pies are sold when the price is two dollars. That is the best possible price that you should sell the pie for then. Okay? And this is called market research. So people that sell things have to do this because they want to get the most money. Unfortunately, that's the way our society works. People are trying to make money all the time. And so graphs like this, like the parabola, really help them to figure out what's the best deal going. So are you convinced that parabolas are somewhat important? All right. Well, let's take a situation from real life. Let's say you had a ball and you said, I'm going to record the time in seconds right here, okay? And I'm going to record the height of the ball. So after it's, whoa, that's weird. I guess the ball started at one meter high. Let's pretend that you're holding the ball at one meter high, okay? So at zero seconds, you're just holding the ball there and it's one meter high, okay? After one second, the ball, okay, you've thrown it now, so the ball is in the air, it's six meters high. Now, you must be some kind of, you know, super strength thrower, maybe a CFL football player or something, or a baseball player, but after two seconds, we've got nine meters high. That's crazy. After three seconds, ten meters. It keeps getting higher and higher, doesn't it? But wait, after four seconds, gravity takes effect, just like the dolphin, just like the motocross bike gravity has to come into effect if we're talking the earth here right after five seconds we're down to six meters high and at six seconds it's back into your hands at one meter okay now if we were to graph this and I'm gonna do it the quick way okay at this point in the video the audio cut out and I'm pretty upset so what Bentley is doing there is he's creating a graph based on that table of values generate graph see what he's doing he's using smart board software very smart I think he's going to uh, make the graph a little easier to see here now and as you can see those plotted points look a lot like a shape that is very important to this unit it's called a parabola and um, not sure what else I should say at this point because I just want Bentley to catch up here. Who knows what he was talking about? Um, so what do you think he's saying? Okay, well there's all our plotted points, and um, 
I guess he's showing that all of those points line up with the table of values. So if you go two across, you go nine up. <coughs> Connecting the points, and we have a parabola. Okay, I think that's all that was missing from there. Not too much. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking and let it, the volume's coming back right about now. now. This is a ball over time. Okay, and how high it is over time, and the time is in seconds, and the ball once again is in meters. The height of the ball is in meters. Remember, this part is called the dependent part, and this part down here is called the independent part. I'm not sure if you remember that, but I definitely have videos on that for grade nine. So. The height of the ball the uh, the height of the ball depends on time, okay so here's our parabola, and let's just review a few things. Uh, this graph is going downwards, it is negative, so therefore it has a maximum, okay and um, I'm not sure how many other little words you're supposed to learn in this very first uh, unit here. So I might even push pause for a second. Let me just push pause here so that I don't waste your time. I'll be right back. All right, so I looked at your textbook and basically what I saw in there was that you need to know what a minimum and a maximum are, and you do already. Now, by the way, if you were to tell me what the maximum is here, you would tell me, how would you tell me? I would say, what is the maximum? Well, you wouldn't tell me that the maximum is three, okay? That is time. The maximum has to do with the y-axis here. So you're going to say, hey, the maximum of this parabola is, look over here, notice it's right across, the maximum is 10. So y is equal to 10. That is the maximum for this parabola. Okay? And if it's a minimum, if it was a graph like this down here, you would just say, oh, the minimum is y equals negative 1, because it would be down at negative 1, way down here. Okay? So that's two things you should know. There's one more word that I haven't really talked about, but it's so similar to what we're talking about right now. I'm going to use a different colored pen. I'll use a black pen. See this dot right here? This is the spot where the graph, or the parabola, changes direction. Okay? It's changing. It's like, okay, I'm not going up anymore. I've leveled off. I'm about to start going down now. That spot right there has a special name. And yes, you could call it a maximum, but that spot where it changes direction is called the vertex. Tex, tex. That is called the vertex, not the vortex. It's not some science fiction word. It's just called the vertex. Okay? Um, if you're reading it in a textbook, you would hear this. You'd hear the lowest point on a parabola that opens upward or the highest point on a parabola that opens downward. See, that's why I do this on YouTube instead of you having to read that in the textbook because it's way easier to understand this than reading it in a textbook, don't you think? Okay, thanks for agreeing. There's one last thing I want to talk about on this video about parabolas and about this quadratic introduction. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to get rid I'm going to get rid of this. I should really be pushing pause here. I'm just going to click X, and I'm just going to try and delete this stuff. Delete. Bye. See ya. See ya. Okay. Now, do you remember from grade 9, and you may, you've probably forgot, but anyway, I'm going to remind you. In grade 9, you could tell if, um, if an equation or a relation was linear, and linear means if it's a straight line, straight line being like what I just draw, drew right here. You could tell if you were to take the number at the bottom of this table of values, the y value down here, and if you were to subtract the one above it. So 1 minus 6, you get negative 5. Okay? Now if you were to do that continually, like 6 minus 9, 9 minus 10, and if you got negative 5 each time, this would not be a quadratic, it would be a linear equation or a linear relation. Okay, so let's do that. 6 minus 9, negative 3. Okay, definitely not. This is not linear, okay? But just for fun, let's keep doing it. What's 9 minus 10? Negative 1. What's 10 minus 9? 1. What's 9 minus 6? 3. What's 6 minus 1? 5. Okay, now if you remember from grade 9, these were called first 
you might be saying it right now or you might just be saying I have no idea what he's talking about but anyway they're called first differences okay well have I got news for you if you subtract this f minus this and this minus this and this minus this and so on so let's try it if you go negative 5 minus negative 3 what do you get now you could do it on your calculator but you could think about it negative 5 minus I'll even show you negative 5 minus negative 3 a lot of people are saying negative 8 right now I can hear you but be careful okay there's a negative sign and a negative sign here so remember when there's two negative signs it becomes positive so negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 now I'm not going to rewrite this each time but let's keep going what is negative 3 minus negative 1 that's like saying negative 3 plus 1 negative 2 interesting so so far we have negative 2 here we've got negative 2 here what's negative 1 minus positive 1 negative 1 minus 1 look at that negative 2 again what is 1 minus 3 negative 2 look at that 3 minus 5 negative 2 so there's something important here first of all I'm gonna tell you the title of this you're getting sick of that color I'm sure these are called second do I really have to write differences let's see if this thing can write quicker no it can't if I write too quickly it gets messy these are called second differences right here because we did it twice we subtracted the first time first differences we got these numbers then we did it again the same thing and notice we got negative 2 each time that's pretty cool and so what you need to know here is that if you find the second differences of a table of values this is a table of values if you get a number that's identical for the second differences then what you have is something called a quadratic you could call it a quadratic relation if you want okay but you have a quadratic you're gonna get a parabola when you graph this thing because second differences gave us all negative twos right here alright so I just want you to remember that I'm not sure if there's anything else you need to know let me push whoa I just uh, pushed the wrong button let me push pause and see if you know everything you need to know okay for the second time this video lost its audio so I'm just gonna quickly explain what Bentley was talking about here here we have 3x plus 4 whenever you want to graph something because it says graph each relation just pick whatever you want for the x values put those values into like for example if you put a negative 2 um, where the x is you go 3 times negative 2 well that's negative 6 plus 4 and you get negative 2 so see at the top there see at the very top it says uh, negative 2 well that's what it got, you got for y now if you put a negative 1 where you see the x well 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 4 is 1 and that's what comes out for y and if you keep doing that and you plot those points you get a straight line okay so you would quickly know you, you might remember this from grade 9 um, this is called the slope intercept form from grade 9 and uh, there's a quicker way to graph it than a table of values um, the 4 is the y-intercept so to graph that you would just look for the 4 on the graph and I'm assuming Bentley's going to do that any second now there it is he's that is called the y-intercept the place where the graph cuts through the y-axis then you look over at the 3 in front of the x the 3 is the slope or how steep the line is okay now 3 is really the same thing as 3 over 1 so what you're going to do is you're going to count up. Now don't count squares, which is what Bentley's doing there. Make sure you go by the numbers, and Bentley's realizing that right now. He's like, oh, wait a minute, it's 4. It's going by 2s, basically, so 4, 6, 8. You want to go 3 up from that 4 and go 1 across. So 3 up, I think he's going to do that here, and then 1 across and that's how you can plot this graph and you only need two points to plot a straight line okay and so that's the quickest way to graph this linear equation
All right, now we're moving on to the next one. 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. Again, make a table of values, and if you do that, you can pick anything you want for x, and when you, whatever you type in for x, you'll come up with what y should be. And I think Bentley does that right here. So y equals, he's going to write in the 2, and instead of x, he's going to put a bracket. So negative 2 where the bracket is, put the negative 2 where you see the x. Hopefully he will do that very soon. He's talking about something else there. There, negative 2 squared. Don't forget the squared. Don't forget the squared. Thank you. Minus 5 bracket negative 2. Again, we're putting a negative 2 wherever we see the x. And then a plus 3. And then you can do this on the calculator. You can use bed mass if you remember that. Do you do the brackets first? Negative 2 times negative 2, well, you might be saying that's 4. And 4 times 2 in front is 8. So let's see if he remembers to put an 8 there. While well, he's talking about it, thinking about it, and uh, any second now, we got the 8 right on. Negative 5 times negative 2. Be careful not to forget the negative 5. That's positive 10. Thank you. And the last one's 3. Add those all up, and what do you get for y? Hopefully we get 21, folks, because look at the table of values. Just look over at that table of values. When, y, when x is negative 2, y is 21. Sure enough, we did it. Fantastic. And he's uh, making sure you see that there. Right on making sure it's perfect. Great. If you put the negative 1 in there, the 0, 1, and 2, you would come up with values for y, and then you could plot them on that graph and quickly come up with a parabola. All right? Okay, the last thing is that, see that little 2 there in the 2x squared minus 5x plus 3? That little 2 means that this thing has an exponent of 2. This equation has an exponent of 2 or this expression, and what that means is when you see a little 2 up there, is you know you have a parabola, okay? So in math, we call this a degree of 2. Um, notice the top equation, there's an invisible 1 up there, and that is called a linear equation when you just have a degree of 1. The bottom one has a degree of 2. That is the highest exponent in that equation there, okay, in that graph. So we know that that is a parabola. Okay, and the top one is just a line. Okay, you can tell very quickly if you have a parabola or a line just by looking at the degree of the equation. Okay, hopefully you can spot this in a second. I think that's the end of this video. And uh, for some reason, he just kept going and going here. Okay, that is the end. Thank you. And you know what, the rest of the videos hopefully won't be this messed up. Peace.